Hi YouTube, so this is going to be a BMW video, so I know not, not a lot of you are that keen on the BMW videos, but I might as well film it anyway. Um, so I'm going to say today's tasks, but it's going to take a lot longer than today I think, so I really can't be asked to spend all day doing this. So the plan is to, the overall plan is to drop the, uh, the ride height a bit. I also want to... So the, when I went for an alignment, because the, the front toe was completely out, so I took it somewhere to be aligned. Um, so I've got these stats here that they provide you with all the different angles, like toe, camber and caster. And the, it's weird, I've got, I've got HSD Mono Pro coilovers with the camber adjustment on top. And on the top of the strut towers, you've also got slotted holes so you can so basically I've, I've maxed out the slotted holes in terms of camber. I've maxed out the the coilovers in terms of the camber adjustment. And we've still got, where are we? So the front left, I've got two and a half degrees of camber. And the front right, just basically just over one degree. So I'm not really quite sure why they're so different. So part of this is going to be in try and get that closer to the 2.5 that's on the other side. Whether I can do that or not, I'm not sure whether I have to sort of elongate those holes on the strut tower slightly more just to get a bit more camber, because I can't get any more out of the coilovers themselves. It's a bit of a pain. Um, and to try and align to the rear right, has got 0 0.32 degrees. Whereas the rear left is like 0 0.09, so the the right one's got too much toe in, I think. So I'm gonna have to try and adjust that one, which is relatively easy. I've actually got some some Powerflex bushes for the the rear trailing arms, which I tried to do out on the road and gave up because I got fed up with it. So now I'm in the I've got my car in the garage, so it should be. A bit easier, but I can you know get power tools to the car, so you know maybe a bit, a bit. So maybe it will be a bit easier. We shall see. And also, really annoyingly, when I went for an MOT last week, as I pulled off my driveway, that sort of four lock right, I heard a sort of rubbing noise. Got out and look and see what's wrong with it. I had to get to the MOT, and um, what turned out was the collar at the top of the coilover where the top of the drop link connects to. That had spun round and just taken a big groove out the inside of the tyre and a bit of the metal off the, the wheel as well. So, annoyingly, I'll probably have to get a pair of front tyres and hope that the, the front right wheel is salvageable. It's a bit of a dilemma when it comes to the tyres because, I mean, ideally I want semi-slicks all round, but the rear tyres have still got plenty of grip left on them, the PS4s. So first things first, I need to get the car up in the air. So I've driven up onto blocks at the front, just so I can get the the trolley jack to the sort of centre jacking point. I just need to jack the back up, put some blocks underneath it, get all the tyres up to the right pressure, and then I'll probably start working on the rear side of the car first. Right, so I've set all the tyre pressures. The car's up on blocks all round. I'm just going to go round and measure the distance from the centre of the wheel up to the wheel arch, make a record of those. And then I shall get cracking on the rear coilovers. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, those are the measurements we've got. I'm quite surprised that they're all relatively close. You know, as close as it should be, and the car's not corner weighted or anything, or balanced. So, and if I can drop them all so they're all the same height and a little bit lower, then I shall be very happy with that. So, those of you who've got the same setup as me, the old uh, HSD Mono Pros, uh, will probably be familiar with how it's a bit weird with the rear ones because you set the height with the spring seat, the rear right. You can see there's you should be able to see there's plenty of thread left to go even lower just underneath the the locking ring there. 
Now on the other side, I've lowered it completely to the bottom. And hopefully, once I put the wheels back on and lower it down, they should be about the same, hopefully. All right, that's me done for the day. Uh, just finished lowering the rear. Just, I'd forgotten how much I hate doing that. <laughs> Such a pain in the ass because you, it just takes so long because you take it up on the axle stands, adjusting it, lowering it back down. Just keeps repeating that over and over. So I've got them close enough. Um, I dropped the rear left 12 mil and the rear right 21 mil. So they are about the same now. I'm never going to get it spot onto the millimeter, but they're only about a couple of millimeter apart. So I'm happy with that. So I should have to do the fronts next and then I can show you that tire that's just been mashed up. And I can have a better look at the wheel. So hopefully that wheel salvageable, like I said at the beginning. Otherwise I'll have to try and buy one, one wheel. So yeah, that's me done. Time for a beer, I think. Right, so you know at the beginning I was saying about I had an issue with the front right tyre. Well, let me show you what's happened. This is the front left. So I'll just show you what it should look like. So you see the, the drop link is kind of parallel to the, the coilover behind it. This is nice and nice and firm. No movement there. So if we just nip round the other side. All right, so this is the other side. So you can get a kind of clue what's happened by all the, the rubber here. So this has spun round, whether it's because this one's come loose so it allows this one to spin a bit. Maybe, maybe it does it worse when you go on full lock to the right. So anyway, this has spun round, so it's around here. And done this to the tire. So hopefully you can see, I haven't got a lot of space here. Got that big channel. Going around there and you can see it's taken some of the Material, material off right at the edge of the rim. So yeah, I'm going to need a new tire now, which is a real pain because I've still got some some good tread. Maybe not on the inside. Outside there's still loads, but there we are. That's uh, camera for you, I guess. So still a good few track days left in them, which is a bit of a pain. And obviously, you can't just buy one tire because the other ones pretty worn as well so I'll have to get a pair of tyres so it's a bit annoying a bit of expense I didn't really need at the moment so I measured the gap between the two green uh, lock-in wheels that's what they're called I can't quite remember anyway I measured the gap between them on the front left we got 47 mil the other side was about seven mil narrower uh, they're about one centimetre different ride height either side from the floor to the wheel arch. So I'm going to go for 25 mil there. It should be a drop of 22, 22 mil drop here, which should equate to a little bit more actually at the wheel because that's a bit further in. That's the plan anyway. So yeah, I've measured that. I've got now got 25 mil there. I'm going to wind in like this. Just going to wind in to the bottom. Just basically wind it into the bottom section of the coilover. And then oh, I've obviously undone the drop link as well. So I can spin this round. I shall have to probably shorten it as much as I can. If it's still too long I'll have to... The adjustable ones I've got come with three different of the sort of centre shaft section, different length ones, so I'll have to get a shorter one and wind out the end bits. So yeah, I'll, um, what I do is I'll drop that. I'll do that both sides and I'll probably just drop the car down 
see how low it is before I start trying to decide how long the drop link needs to be. So I've had a good look over the coilover and I'm pretty safe to say that a loose lock-in ring, this one here, is what caused all that damage to that tyre. It allowed this bit to rotate round and catch the inside of the tyre. So guys, yeah, if you're running coilovers, try and get in the habit of making sure these locking rings are all still locked in place. Otherwise, uh, you might end up with a hefty bill like me. Such a pain in the ass. All right, so it's time to pick up the uh, BMW jobs again. Uh, it's now 2022, so happy new year. Ooh. So, where was I? It's a good question. Um, <laughs> must have been out. I don't know. Somewhere between a month and two months. I think I'd, I was happy with the rears. I'd got them to the height I wanted. The fronts, I think I'd adjusted. I realised that at least one of the drop links was knackered. So I ordered some new drop links. Uh, I tend to just buy the same ones every time from eBay because I keep, otherwise you end up with loads of spares that don't work together. I've also ordered a nice big dun dun dun, Ram air filter. For those of you who watch the, the FN2 stuff as well, you'll see that I made a sort of homemade cold air induction kit. And I used a Ram air filter, it's a lot smaller than this, but it needs a lot more work. You had to, had to create the pipes to, to take the air filter into a certain location. Whereas the Beamer, I believe, is just a simple case of disconnecting the air box and just connecting the filter. You don't have to cut up the, the MAF housing or anything. So yeah, we shall give this a go. Hopefully it'll give me a bit more noise on track days, so I'll be able to hear what I'm doing. If you haven't got reinforcement plates on your, uh, your strut towers, then I'd definitely advise getting those. I think you suffer from cracks otherwise. So I've just been staring at this um, coilover for like a quarter of an hour, um, trying to figure out what to do to, to get some extra camber and just complete mystery why there's pretty much one degrees on the right hand side and then was it about two and a half on the left. So the only thing I can think of doing is to lengthen the elongated slots on top of the strut tower a bit more. So these, try and make these a bit longer, which I'll have to do on my reinforcement plate as well. Right, so I've elongated those three holes on top of the strut tower. Uh, I've done it at two millimetres for all three of them. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's going to equate to in regards to extra camber. Won't really know until I get it back on the ground and measure it again. There's only so far you can go before that's going to touch the strut tower, that nut there. So we shall see, hopefully it's given me a, a degree, but don't really know. So if I remember right, bearing in mind it's been a long time since I uh, was working on the Beamer, I'm pretty sure I dropped the front. So what I need to do now is get it back on the wheels, see how high it's sitting. I've got some uh, drop links to put on as well, because I know one of them's knackered one of the ball joints. So it's a bit annoying, I've maxed out the drop. So this is the front. And I can get my hand in quite far. So I've measured that from the centre of the wheel up to the the wheel arch <coughs> is uh, thirty three point five centimetres. So now the rear, you can see, you can barely get it up to my knuckles. So it's definitely lower at the back. So again from the centre of the wheel to the arch you've got 32.7 so it's roughly three quarters of a centimetre different. 
But like I said, I've maxed out the front. There's nothing more I can do. Unless I start cutting bits, which I'm not going to do. But actually wound the coil over as far into the, the bottom section as I can. And I just can't go any further. So I'll have to do, I mean, I wanted it slightly lower than the, than the back. But yeah, not going to happen. Oh, it'll be better than what it was. But it's still a bit annoying. I can't go as low on the front. I've just double checked that the uh, both sides have got the same tension in the spring or pretension, I forget what it's called. So I've just measured both sides from the plate at the top and they're both exactly the same. So the driver's side actually undid all right. It's just that bloody passenger side that won't undo. The passenger side I've undone this and that but it just won't come out of the shaft. So I have to remember when I put the next one in to put a load of copper grease See if that helps a bit. So I'm hoping, because it hasn't dropped massively, I can still use this same shaft. But I mean, I've got to replace this because it's damaged. I'm hoping I can just stick with this shaft and just wind this all the way in. It seems to, I just tried just then, it seemed to line up with the hole, so I'm not sure. Hopefully the anti-roll bar hasn't dropped and it's just giving me like a false reading, but... We shall see, I'll try and get that other bugger off the other side. Alright, there's the little buggers off. So this top one is completely seized. There's no way of un unwinding that. It's just nothing to put a spanner on. Uh, the bottom one's pretty stiff as well, so I just put a whole new drop link on, I think, on the passenger side. What I did find um, once I taken, once I'd undone the driver's side, because I wasn't sure how I was going to get the old uh, dak dak gun on the bottom of the drop link, I managed to just drop the um, the anti roll bar as far as I could, and with this lovely little attachment, I managed to get it all right. That had done pretty nicely. So yeah, I'll stick a new one on. And uh, I think this time I'm just going to put copper grease everywhere, all inside the shaft. And um, hopefully it'll be a bit easier next time. I seem to be undoing them like every year. So, oh well. Alright, so just for reference, it's now, I think it's the 13th of February. <laughs> I think I've been doing this for about two months. Well, I say doing it for two months, I started it about two months ago. Um, I think I was saying in some other videos that a lot of DIYs got in the way of my car plans at the moment for this year. Just trying to think where I got to last time. I think I was about to put the drop links on. So here we go. All right, so I've literally changed my mind within about five seconds. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do both drop links. I might as well, seeing as I've got the wheels off and everything. So I, th I was just thinking the best way of doing this. I reckon because it's a lot easier to do it with the old dak dak gun when the uh, anti-roll bars all the way down. If I connect the bottom of both drop links to the anti-roll bar while it's down then I can swivel it up and then do the top ones which are uh, easier to get to to tighten up. So I've just put about half a ton of copper grease inside here. <laughs> Got a nice bit of fluff on that. So I've tightened up the bottom half this bit here, as tight as I can. And actually, yeah, like I said, I'll do the the bottom sections first, and then I can swivel the anti-roll bar up and do the uh, the top bits afterwards. Because it's a bit easier to to get a spanner, a couple of spanners on this bit here, on the top bit. It's just a pain in the ass down there somewhere. So that's the plan. I reckon that'll make it a bit easier to install. It seems that I've literally got to wind them both all the way in on this biggest setting it seems to be right seem to have the anti-roll bar nice and level for those of you who haven't bought these before you get like these particular ones you get three different bar or three different shaft lengths and then the two ball joint sections either end they're both they're like opposite thread so this one for example 
is clockwise to screw into the shaft, whereas the other side will be anti-clockwise to screw in. So what I tend to do is put the the regular sort of clockwise one at the top, because when you're trying to undo these and it's absolutely tight as a bugger, you don't know which way to turn. So if you try and get in the habit of always putting the clockwise one at the top, and when you go to undo that one, you know that that's a, a regular thread and it's the bottom, the one that's back to front. I just tightened up, make sure the locking rings are tight. And for once, I've actually I've actually bought this for the Civic because I got some new coilovers going on. So I've got some rust blocker to sort of puts like a, a coating on on things. So I thought I might as well spray these as well. Although they're a few years old already, they don't actually look too bad. I put a copper grease into on the threads that have gone into into this section here and in here I think that's done in terms of the front suspension hopefully I mean I've said before it's a bit annoying that it's not as low as the back but I have to do track days coming up in a couple of months and I've got stuff to do on the on the Civic ready for the car shows this year so I'll drop this back down and I need to service it, change the brake fluid, and get new tyres, unfortunately. All right, the wheels are back on. I'm just going to loosen these three nuts, and then I'll tighten them back up when the full weight is on the, on the ground. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Although I tend to never do that, I always forget. But I think that's what you're supposed to do. So I've been to get new tyres, which I shall show you in a second, and I've just gone to get the toe, the front toe done, because the front left was towing out I believe, I think that's out, so it looked a bit off, so now we've got them both towing in slightly, and the camber for the front so that one, the right was about one degrees before I elongated those holes. Before we were about one point, I think that was about, obviously these figures have changed a bit because I've lowered the car, but that was about 2.5 I think before, and that was about one. So that's reduced a little bit from lowering the car. So I've gained about negative one degrees from that five millimeters of extra elongated holes on top of the right hand strut tower. So that's pretty good. I'm pleased with that because they're a lot closer than they were before. They're like one and a half degrees different before. So I'm pleased with that. That'll do me for the first track day of the season. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, this is what tires I've ended up with. So we've got Michelin Pilot Super Sports. So these should have better dry grip than the PS4s, probably worse in the wet. But it'd be interesting to see how these perform compared to the PS4s I had before. So I wanted to get Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sports, but I couldn't get them in time. I was a bit rushed and I had two days to get some tyres on the car so I could go to work. So these are the best ones I could get at short notice. So. We shall see. They weren't bad price, £125 each. When I was quoted, I think it's 180 or 190 for the PS4S's. So let's see how they get on very soon. So apologies, that was a bit of a weird mishmash video. So I was trying to think what we've learned from that one. Well, firstly, make sure you keep checking your coilovers. Uh, if they come loose, then you could potentially wreck a tyre like I did. I've also learned that the front camber can be completely different when you set the coilovers up exactly the same <laughs> and you can see what I did to try and get them a little bit closer if you're having the same problems. And what was the other thing? And I've also learned that the front HSD coilovers don't go that low. 
So I'm a bit annoyed about that. I wanted it a bit lower, like I said, but it is what it is. They're as low as they are. And I should be interested, like I said earlier, to see what those Pilot Super Sports are like on track. I will be looking out for a spare set of wheels so then I can get some semi slicks on those. So I've got two sets of wheels for track days. But yeah, all the ones I've seen are miles and miles away, all really expensive. So hopefully something will come up soon. So huge thanks if you've made it to the end. As always, please like and subscribe. Hit the old notifications bell, chuck a comment down below. And uh, I shall see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.